a year after the convoy came to the capital. Can you um, reflect on where you think the movement is right now? I mean, there is clearly a heightened police presence here. There are protesters outside. Do you feel the movement has grown? Do you feel it's abated? What's your read on what's happened over the past 12 months? I don't know. I think that's a better question to ask Mr. Polyev. He seems a lot closer to the convoy. Uh, my approach is very much uh, on making sure that we're delivering good jobs and good opportunities for Canadians. Uh, we know that people are worried and even frustrated about how the world is unfolding around them. And as a politician, you have two choices. You can either try and amplify those fears, make people even matter, reflect that anger and that uncertainty uh, that people are legitimately feeling because the world is changing in unpredictable ways, reflect that back at them without offering real solutions. Or you can choose to buckle down and deliver on the kinds of things that are going to make people feel confident in their own future, in their kids' future, in their community's future, in their jobs. These are the kinds of choices you have to make as a leader. Quite frankly, when uh, Mr. Polyev's best solution to inflation is to buy cryptocurrency, that's not responsible leadership. If people had bought crypto when he told them that was the best way to opt out of inflation, they would have lost half of their life savings. That's not a solution. What we're talking about here, rolling up our sleeves, doing the hard work, investing in good jobs on assembly lines like this one that are building the products that not just Canadians want, but the world wants, doing it with cleaner energy, doing it in an environmentally responsible way and putting workers and communities at the center of what they do. Listen, there are always going to be politicians out there who try to you know, exploit legitimate anger and concerns that people have. But that's not the way to get something built. Crossing your arms and saying Canada is broken. It's not the way to build a better future for Canadians. Recognizing, yeah, we're facing tough times right now. But we're going to be there for each other. We're going to deliver, whether it's dental care for kids, whether it's uh, support with a GST rebate, whether it's childcare to make sure that families can have the real choices to actually engage in the workforce or not. These are things that make a huge positive difference. These are things that, that the Conservative Party under Polly has stood against. So yeah, it can pay off to drum up anger and you know, encourage people to wave flags. But if you actually want to deliver a better future for Canadians, you want to reassure them that there is a bright future for them and their communities and their families, you got to roll up your sleeves and do the work. And that's what people here know. That's what I'm here to do. About a year ago, you called um, some of the protesters who came to Parliament Hill um, conspiracy theorists and people with tinfoil hats. I know you meant the protesters, but a lot of people feel like you call them people with tinfoil hats. Do you regret those words now? My responsibility as a prime minister is stand up for people's safety, people's well-being in this country. That's what I did during the pandemic. I took some tough decisions to make sure that people were able to stay safe, they were able to hang on to their jobs, they were able to make sure we're not overwhelming our healthcare systems and protecting those frontline heroes by getting vaccinated. And at the same time as 80% of Canadians were stepping up to do the right thing, not just for themselves, but for their neighbors, there were people out there trying to scare people into putting their own lives at risk and their communities at risk. My job to keep Canadians safe involves following the science, following the best expertise of our public health officials, of our doctors, and I won't apologize for doing that. We kept Canadians safe through that pandemic. Canadians kept each other safe during the pandemic in spite of those who are mistakenly telling everyone and deliberately telling everyone that getting a vaccine was worse than getting COVID. It breaks my heart to this day to know how many families 
were sitting beside the loved one's bedside as they lay dying, saying, oh my God, I just wish I hadn't listened to all those nasty YouTube videos because my, my father, my brother is dying of COVID because he thought the vaccine was more dangerous. So no, I will not back off on making sure that we are keeping Canadians safe. That's the job Canadians asked me to do when they elected me prime minister and that's what I'm going to continue to do.